Okay, all of you, can you hear me at the back? It's okay, here? Yeah. Okay, great. So it's nice to see you. Is it nice to see the sun? <laughs> yeah, so I heard uh, it's about seven days of uh, sun, so, so that, that's great. But we praise God also, you know, winter is about over. Is it over? Not yet. <laughs> it's never over. Then it's over. Okay. So what series have we been going through the past few weeks? Okay, being faithful, right? So we're in our faithful series. While uh, when we watch the videos of our pastors in the Philippines, uh, it's the series on Genesis. So I encourage you, if uh, you were blessed by those messages, it's all online, all right? And also, if you missed any of those messages, I think it should not be missed because I actually choose which video messages to be shown here. So I recommend that you watch it. Also, if uh, you have missed some of the Sundays where I preach, okay? It's not yet online, but we are actually working on that. But if you have a USB, we can save it to your USB so that you can listen to the message. So some of the topics on faithfulness that we've been talking about the past few weeks, actually past few months, okay? So first is that it's being faithful in prayer. You still remember? Faithful in meditation. Faithful in obedience. Part one, part two, faithful in large group gatherings like this, Sunday services, faithful in fasting. Okay. Have you been fasting? I heard feasting. Okay. Faithful in small group gatherings and also two weeks ago, faithful in accountability. And I, I, I really sense these are the topics that God, that God wanted us to talk about. Okay. And even today, the message that uh, I wanted to share, I actually wanted to delay it and talk about something else. But I really sensed that God wanted me to talk about this topic tonight. Okay, so, um, yeah, but if, uh, just, to sh just to do a little throwback or, you know, remembering and recalling a few things in my life. Growing up, I enjoyed collecting toy robots. Okay? Toy robots before Transformers. Everyone knows about Transformers. This is before Transformers, okay? Can anyone relate to me? <coughs> yes! <laughs> All right. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm not the only one who enjoyed collecting robots. So I want, you know, I want you to guess, okay? What kind, of, who's this robot? Okay? Dimos. <laughs> Ryan Elizondo is a fan, okay? So this Dimos, anyone know this? Gosh, okay, you, you missed your life. Okay, okay so I had the Dimos uh, toy and I, I enjoyed uh, playing with that growing up. Okay, next is this one. Okay, this is Mekanda Robot. Feel. What were you playing? Barbie dolls? <laughs> Okay, how about this one? Mazinger Z! No. It's like, it's so obvious. No, it was obvious to me, okay? But everyone knows, of course. Oh, that's why, right? So, I enjoy receiving these gifts. Uh, does every, anyone know, does everyone know Multisply, pretty much? No, not really, not all, okay? But anyway, these were some toys that I enjoyed receiving as Christmas gifts and also um, you know, receiving as birthday gifts, and I enjoyed it, okay? But I realized, you know, as much as I enjoyed receiving these gifts, there was something I enjoyed more. It's when I started to learn to actually buy stuff for my sisters, okay? So I was really the ideal big brother, I think. Aside from half of my life, half of it, I felt I was ideal. So I still remember, I bought them My Little Pony. Okay, who knows about My Little Pony? Okay, no guys? Okay, the ladies, you know My Little Pony, right? So, yeah, so, so that was the easy part, giving them those My Little Ponies. But the hard part was when, they, when they, my two sisters asked me to play My Little Pony with them. Okay, so I, I wonder, 
how do I play My Little Pony with them? Do I get Walter's Five and chop chop the pony? <laughs> okay? But uh, I realized they asked me to brush the hair of My Little Pony. Okay? It's my darkest secret and I'm not sharing it to you. Now it's off my chest, let's move on to the message. Okay? So, but I would just you know, but anyway, there was a joy when I remember, when I gave that. Uh, those toys, I think it was like uh, I, I went to the States and those were toys that I gave to them. And I, I felt there was something really joyful and when I saw that my sisters were so happy. So I decided to give them more things in the future. Like, you know, when I was bored with Baltus 5, I gave it to them. And I did not see smiles in their faces, but I still gave it to them. And Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I sense this is something that I experienced there. In everything I did, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So what the Apostle Paul was saying here is, he actually worked, he worked hard so that he can support himself and at the same time, so that he would have more ability to give to others. He received support from the churches also. It's, we say that the Apostle Paul is a tent maker. Yes, but there were times he also received um, support from the churches. But the mindset was not so that he becomes richer, but actually so that he can become uh, a more giving person. Right? And uh, so Jesus, we don't really see this verse said by Jesus in the Gospels, but apparently he, he said that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, I think for us, we only give when we feel like it. I also remember there were times that I gave out of the feeling of guilt that people were saying, hey, if you don't give, imagine all the people who will starve if you don't give. So it was like I felt forced. Or sometimes we give out of obligation, Sometimes we don't give because we don't see the needs around us. Okay? Or sometimes, I would think, we don't give because we feel or we think we have nothing to give. So I want to encourage you, as I was reading these passages about giving, I just got more and more encouraged, even until this morning, because of my wife's quiet time, it was also about giving. And I really sense this is what God is telling us as a church, and I'm simply His messenger. So we want to talk about being faithful in giving. And our, and our passage, our main passage is in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to open your Bibles in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It starts with verse 6. Okay, if you don't have your Bibles, okay, don't, you, you, can, you cannot open your Bibles can you please click on your Bibles? Okay? I see people clicking on their Bibles. So why don't we pray? And let's really see how we can be more faithful in our giving. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you, Lord Jesus, right now. And, I, and we pray that you will speak to us, Lord. Whatever thoughts that we may have about giving, whatever we might be holding back, Lord, we pray that it will be your words, Lord, your words, in your word that will speak to each and every one of us. So guide us, Lord, right now. Lord, I'm simply your messenger. Override all my preparation. And let this be your message for each and every one of us. We lift this all up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So being faithful in giving, the first thing you need to do is, or think of, is you need to be generous. Everyone say, be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So in this passage, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul is actually saying, don't withhold it. When, when, it's, when it comes to giving, don't withhold, just give. Be generous. The reaping will be generous as well anyway. Okay? Usually, what you reap will be much more than what you sow. Okay? And the reaping that you receive isn't just material gain,
but actually it can be many things else like receiving the joy when you reap it. Okay? Now, this one, it takes faith. Why? Because sowing comes first and you don't really know if it's going to reap. Okay? Sometimes when we donate to an organization, we believe in that organiza organization, that's why we donate it. That's why we sow to that, for the, to that organization. But we don't see the reaping immediately sometimes. So it takes faith. The results may take time to happen. Okay? And look at this verse. It says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. So I reflect. Do you feel that you're reaping sparingly in your life? It seems like it's always, you know, uh, what you experience is sparingly, not abundance then it might be possible that you are not sowing as much as God wants you to sow. Okay? God wants you possibly to sow even more and then you will reap eventually even more. But it takes faith to be generous. Okay? Secondly, it also takes sacrifice. Okay? It takes sacrifice. Let's look at Luke chapter 21, verse 1 to 2. So put your finger there. Okay, or bookmark it, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, because that's our main passage. But look at Luke chapter 21, verse 1 to 2. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. Okay? Now, firstly, may I ask, is this a parable? What do you think? Look at the first few phrases and words. As Jesus looked up. So is this a parable? No. This is an actual experience that Jesus saw, and he saw people giving gifts. Did he discourage the people from giving to the temple? No, right? He did not discourage that. Okay? But he commended this poor widow. Now, how much did the poor widow, poor widow give? Okay. First, it was copper. Not silver, not gold, nothing else. It was copper. Not only was it copper, it was small copper. Not only was it small copper, it was very small copper coins. Okay? And actually, what Jesus was saying here, he, she gave out of her poverty, how much did she put? In percentage-wise, she put in all that she had to live on. Okay? Now, this was a poor widow. Sometimes we don't really see how grave the situation is because in our society, even if you're a widow, you have a chance. Okay? Even in this country, there are benefits, right? But in that culture, when you are a widow, okay, it's kind of hard. There's, there's almost no chance for you to really have anything else. And not only is she a widow she's a poor widow okay so she had nothing to live by and yet she still gave okay so it takes sacrifice everyone say sacrifice okay i believe many of us we are giving okay but it sometimes has a limit that to the point that you don't want to sacrifice now it's not all the time that god will tell you to sacrifice it's not all the time that God will say, give all your savings to the pastor. Never. Okay? That will not happen. Okay? But most of the time, it is, it is a giving that he wants you to give more than you would usually give. And it takes sacrifice. Okay? I still remember a few years ago, have you heard of the Rima radio station? Okay? Anyone? Rima? It's a radio station, right? And it's a Christian radio station. It plays beautiful music. It, uh, it plays wo wonderful messages. And it, is, it has encouraged me, and it has encouraged uh, my wife, 
uh, a lot, especially when driving. Okay? And these are in, in this Rima uh, station, there was a time a few years ago, yeah, they had this 2030 vision. Okay? They had to raise six million dollars, six million New Zealand dollars, just to pay licenses and approvals from the government. Okay? This is not even operational costs. Six million dollars just for the licenses up to 2013. Now, it has blessed me, it has blessed my wife, and maybe he says, hey, we want to give. So we gave a little. And I, I'm blessed because many, many New Zealanders, many people here in New Zealand gave and gave sacrificially. Okay? I even heard of a story of a couple, okay, a very old couple already, and they've been married for 44 years already. And they didn't have much, but they wanted to give. They believed in the vision of Rima. They wanted Rima radio station and even, you know, do you know Shine TV? Okay, so they also have that. They, they believed in this. So they didn't have much. And they prayed to God, Lord, we want to give. And they sensed, God was telling them, you think you don't have anything to give, but you do have something to give from your hand and I can use it. So they were praying about it, and they sensed God was telling them to donate to Rima their diamond, her, the wife's diamond ring. Okay? So the wife's diamond ring. So that's the actual diamond ring. And, and when they told Rima about it, okay, Rima actually said, no, we don't, want, we don't want you to donate that. That's, your, that's precious to you. But they, say, they said, but this is what God is, what we sense God is telling us. We want to donate. So Rima decided to actually put this in trade me and do that bidding. You know, everyone knows trade me? Okay, so they did a bidding and whatever amount they, they win, okay, that's the donation for this couple, right? So they, that, they did that donation and the, the, the trading, the bidding reached up to $2,500. Okay? And that was given to Rima, and you know, praise God, uh, Rima was able to raise six million dollars for their licenses to continue. If you continue to hear Rima today, it is because of the seeds that were sown by people a few years back. Okay? Now, here's the nice thing about the story: the winner, the winning bidder, knew about the story because it's part of the, uh, it's part of the description. So the winning bidder paid Rima the amount that he won, you know, that he, he won the bid for, so 2500 and he got the ring and actually returned it to the couple. Yeah, okay? So, so everyone wins. Everyone was blessed. And I got very encouraged when I heard this. It took faith for the couple. They believed that the, the donation will reap a harvest, not necessarily for themselves, but for their future generations until 2030 or even beyond. And it took sacrifice because it, the cost of that is more than $2,500. That was something precious to them. And yet they were willing to give it up. How about you? Okay. How can you be more generous? Some practical thoughts. Maybe you need to give up, I don't know, Maybe you need to give up buying something that you like. For example, you want to buy a new pair of shoes. Maybe God is telling you, hey, instead of buying those pair of shoes, save it up for the purpose of giving. Okay? I'm not sure. Is that what God is telling you? Okay? Or another bag. I don't know how many Ladies in this room like bags. All kinds of bags. Okay? Gentlemen, I don't know. Do we collect wallets? No. Not, not really, right? Okay? <laughs> okay, so maybe it's giving up something like that. But maybe for the men, it means not upgrading your technology toys. Okay? You don't upgrade to the, the later, you know, the more uh, upgraded cell phone or electronic device. Maybe God is telling you, hey, 
give up buying this or give up buying some travel, okay? Or maybe giving up some trips because God is telling you to be generous. I don't know. Okay? Maybe you can be generous by saving more. Like, very basic, eating out less. Okay? Eating out less and save up, you know, by, by eating at home. Okay? We, had just, we had some Singaporean friends come over last week. And the Singaporean was saying part of their culture is that they don't cook dinner anymore after work. So, really? What do you do? We eat out every night. Okay. What? Okay. That's crazy. But yeah, that was their culture. Okay. So, maybe that's one. Okay. Or maybe when you go to restaurants, it's as simple as not buying drinks. Because sometimes the drinks are expensive. Or foregoing a big party that you're planning. Okay? By being more practical, maybe God is telling you to reuse something if you don't have to replace it yet. Or recycle something. Whatever it is, the mindset is you're doing these things for the purpose of being able to be more generous and more able to give where God is telling you to give. And it requires a lifestyle change. And that is why there are times we, we are reluctant to give, we are willing to give, but we become reluctant when it means having to change our plans or having to change our lifestyle. Okay? God is telling us, no, be generous, don't hold back. Maybe God is telling you the reason why you don't, you're not generous enough is that you need to increase your faith or you need to increase your willingness to sacrifice. So be generous. Okay? Secondly is be intentional. Everyone say, be intentional. Be intentional. Okay. Verse 7, continue in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it says, Each of you should give what, have de- what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or com- under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Okay. So when it comes to being intentional, it means... It's planned. It's not an emotional decision. Like you watch something on TV, it makes you cry, and then you say, okay, let's max out my credit card and give it to that organization. It is planned. It is not an emotional decision. Or it's not even when you only think you have enough, that's why you give. Okay? You need to be intentional about it. So how can you be intentional? First is, you need to check with yourself. You need to check with your spouse. You need to agree together that, yes, God is telling us to be more faithful in giving. And there are things in our lives that we might need to change a bit in order to be able to give. Sometimes we think, yeah, but there's nothing to give. Really? Eh? Is there nothing to give? Really? Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 42, as as a side note. Matthew 10, 42. It says, And if anyone gives, even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Even giving a little will not escape the eyes of God. And He will reward. So check with yourself, check with your spouse, check with whoever, okay? So that you can be intentional about it. Something else you need to check. Check your motives. Matthew chapter 6 verse 2 says, So, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. And the background here is, Jesus was rebuking what? Who? Okay? Jesus was rebuking the teachers of the law, the Pharisees. Why? It was all for show. Especially when it comes to giving to the needy. Okay? They were trying to announce it to everyone. Hey, I'm giving to this or I'm giving to that person. Okay? So the motive was so that people will look up to them. And people will say, wow, that looks like a very generous person. Okay? That's what we call wrong motives. And God detests wrong motives. 
we need to also be careful that we don't fall into the same trap of having wrong motives, such as feeling good about yourself. You just give so that people will recognize you, or your motive is so that, you know, just to fulfill an obligation, or you just you give just because you feel forced. Let's check our motives. Instead, think of the benefits where it will help someone and it will further the mission of that organization that you give to. Okay? So just to say, just to read again, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, okay, this time verse 8, as we continue. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I'm not sure if you've noticed yet. But you will notice as I read more of these verses. But when you give, God sees every time you give. And then He blesses you back even more. That's, that's His economy. And it takes faith. And yet, that is what you will read in many verses. Okay? If I wrote down all the verses that talks about you give, you obey, and God will bless you back even more, then we will finish maybe 8 o'clock. Is that fine? No, it's not fine. Some of you are smiling. Okay. Just joking, okay? But look at that verse, okay? And God is able to bless you abundantly. Do you know the word abundantly? It means overflowing, more than you can actually catch because it's abundant. That's why this takes faith to be generous. That's why God wants us to be intentional. Third is, you check also who to give to. Okay? You check who to give to. It's not like you just walk around and then you have some you know, coins in your wallet or in your pockets and then, oh, oh, catch if you can. Okay? That's not really how it goes. But check who to give it to. Obviously, you give it first to the house of God. Okay? The house of God first. That is what we call tithing. Okay? Tithe means tenth. And we've talked about that in the past, earlier this year. But you first give to the house of God. The truth is, when you give your tithe, that's not giving. Okay? Because God demands 10% and He, and he wants you to return to Him what is His. So when you give your tithe, it's not really giving. It's actually returning to Him what is His. The closest phrase uh, that you can think of when it comes to tithe is actually giving back. But it's not really giving to the Lord. Okay? But we still do it. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, here's another verse. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Then, your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Okay? Then, God demands faith. You see, being faithful in giving actually takes faith that you will give and actually, even if it's not your motive to get it back, God just wants to reward obedience and He enjoys he loves to reward those who obey. So we first give to the house of God. Then, just as verse, uh, yeah, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 already, it says, As it is written, they, are, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. So we give to the poor. We actually give to the needy. Okay, it's here, and it says here, you have freely scattered, meaning... It's, it's out of a joyful heart, not like, you know, you don't want to give it. So you give to the poor and you give to the needy. Now, sometimes we think there are not really many poor or needy people in New Zealand. Okay? That's not true. Okay? That's not true. There are some people here in New Zealand, even here in Bayview, that are poor and are needy. And we can meet their needs as well. God wants us to meet their needs as well. Okay? So we check who to give to. House of God first, to the poor or needy, and also we look for opportunities. Okay? As the Lord leads you, maybe to give to a friend, 
to give to this community okay, or another non-profit organization aside from the church that you attend. Now recently, uh, it's good because we in Bayview, there's a Facebook uh, page for residents in Bayview. And I also know someone who's pretty much connected to a lot of people here in Bayview. So there was one time a mother uh, had emergency surgery, had two children, and she could not really, I think she could not really stand, or she, she, she's a bit uh, immobile, immobile to be able to cook. So, you know, this friend of mine just emailed, is there anyone in the community who can help this family cook meals uh, while the mom is uh, not able to? So we were able to do that. We were able to share one meal. My, my wife's, um, what my wife has cooked for me the first time we met, which is uh, spaghetti. Okay. By the way, um, when we got married, the only thing my wife can cook was spaghetti. <laughs> That's the only thing. All kinds of spaghetti. But it has changed because I prayed. I really prayed, Lord. I don't want to be a spaghetti man. I want other things. I'll be happy with rice. Okay, but anyway, just joking. But yeah, so we, you know, we, we cooked uh, spaghetti pasta for, for that for that mom, and yeah, I was able to. We were able to do that. Okay, we also knew someone who shared to us without expecting anything. She she just shared to us that in her family. She doesn't, have, she doesn't even have money to buy groceries anymore to feed her children. And I sensed, oh. So really, you know, Leigh and I prayed about it and God led us to give to, to that person as well. So there are opportunities here around that abound. You know what? You will see them when you ask God to open your eyes. Lord, can you please open my eyes and give me a sense a sense of discern, a discernment to know who to give to. Sometimes, yes, we give to the poor or needy. But there's some people, they're not poor or needy, but God is telling you to give to that person as well. Okay? So you need to have that discernment. What can you give? Give money, give food, give clothing, give a service that your hands can do, and give some resources. Okay? So that's being intentional. Okay? Third, now this one, Man, this was supposed to be my first point, but God was telling me, okay, it's your third point, but emphasize it. Third is, be very convinced about being faithful in giving. Be very convinced. Right? Verse 9, it says, As it is written, they have scattered their gifts to the poor, and their righteousness endures forever. In many other verses, basically, you've got to be very convinced that giving is a command and it pleases God. Okay? And just like any command of God, He will anyway enable you to follow that command. Okay? If you are willing and if you are intentional about it, He will give you the ability to obey that command. Okay? So, it is a command. You make a commitment to God, Lord, okay, I want to be a more giving person. Give me the opportunity to do that. Okay? Now look at these other verses. Yeah? Next verse. Okay, second. Oh, let me skip it. Okay, do you know this? Um, do you know this movie, Paid Forward? Who does not know this movie? I feel so old. Okay. Okay, Paid Forward is a movie. <laughs> okay, so this kid learned this idea that when you receive blessings, when you receive encouragement, when you receive something, instead of paying back that person who gave you those blessings, you pay it, you pay it forward. So instead of paying back the person who gave you those gifts or blessings, you pay it forward. And when you pay it forward, those people pay it forward, and those people pay it forward. And then there's so much kindness and giving happening around the community. Okay? Now if, you go, if you go back um, to my point, God will provide anyway. Look at verse 10. Ah, amazing. 
Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and, and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. What's the point here? When you give, God provides you back even more so you have a bigger capacity to give even more. It's a cycle. Okay, you just have to have faith to start it that you give and then God gives you more because you're faithful in the little thing. Okay? God is faithful. You are faithful to the Lord in giving. So He gives you a little bit more. Not for yourself, but so that you can give even more. And it turns into a cycle where you give more and more and you are being generous even before you know it. Okay? And that movie paid forward, that just is encouraging. Imagine. If our church will do this, they will say, wow, that church in Bayview not just, does not just hire the hall. They are relevant to the community. And that's what we hope to happen. Third, okay, let's move on. Verse 11. Okay. It benefits everyone. Look at verse 11. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. It benefits everyone. Verse 11, you will be enriched in every way. Who benefits when you give? Who benefits? First, it benefits you. Okay? God will, will bless you so that you can be generous. How often? On every occasion. God is saying, you give. And if you're faithful in your giving, God will provide you more so that you can give and be generous on every occasion that God tells you to be generous. You will have uh, supply for that. So it benefits you. And what does the second phrase of verse 11 say? And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. What's, it, what's happening here? It benefits others. Uh, sorry, it benefits God as well. When they receive, when people receive blessing, and you tell them, well, I'm just blessing you because that's what God tells me to do. Okay? It blesses God. It honors God. So it benefits God's kingdom. And verse 12, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. So again, it benefits God, but it also supplies the needs of God's people. So it blesses others. It, when you are being generous, when you are being faithful in giving, it benefits you. It benefits the mission of God for this world. And it also benefits others. Everyone wins. Okay? I remember a few years ago, oh, anyway, I'll tell you, this coming week, well, this week, I'm going to Wellington with my family. Okay? I'm going to Wellington with my family to attend a church conference. Okay? So, What's, what's amazing about this was that a few years ago, three years ago, I attended a seminar in a church and the guest speaker was from Arise Church in Wellington. Okay? There was no CCF yet. Okay? And when I attended that seminar, I introduced myself to the senior pastor of Arise Church. And then I said that we are about to launch CCF. I'm a church planter and I'm about to launch CCF in a few months. And then he told me, Oh, that's great. I encourage you to join this leader, this, this conference in Wellington <coughs> so that it, can, it might help you. And this is what I'll do. I'll, we'll pay for your conference ticket. We will pray for your lodging. And we will pay for your flight tickets to Wellington. Okay? And I thought, can I bring my whole family from the Philippines? <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> And for a while, there was no phone call after that. But later on, someone called me and they asked me, if you're keen, if your schedule is free, okay, 
Just give us your details. We'll fly you. We'll give you a lodging for those uh, three days. And we'll pay for your ticket. Everything. And they even provided dinner okay, for us. And I felt so blessed. Okay? They were not asking anything in return. They, they, don't, they don't know me. They don't know I'm an actor. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Okay? It's not true. Yeah, not an actor. Okay? That's Brad Pitt. Okay? So, they don't know me. They don't, you know, I was, they're, they're, they weren't going to gain anything from this. But they just wanted to bless me. Okay? But in those, in those kinds of conferences, that's how I grow, you see? I learn a lot. Okay? Uh, in CCF, not everyone, not all our pastors went through seminary, but we learned through seminars. <coughs> not seminary, seminars. So we are, we, we have a degree in seminars, not seminary, okay? But I, that's how I learned, okay? I attend conferences a lot, okay? And God bless me because my dad used to work for Philippine Airlines, so I got free tickets around where Philippine Airlines travel, and I get to attend conferences. Okay? So that's how God just gave me the opportunity to grow. So, so it, I, really hum, I just humble myself. It's, the reason I'm here is not because of me or any my skill. It was God who developed all of it. Okay? So what happened? In that Arise conference, I learned. This church, Arise Church, blessed me. And because of that, it has prepared me, encouraged me, uh, and trained me to be a little bit better as a pastor so that I can be a blessing to people around me. And the people around me are blessing me as well. You know, so it's like, again, paying it forward. Okay? So the last, uh, this year, Arise Church isn't paying for me anymore. Okay? But I, I'm still going. Okay? Because I want to learn as much so that I can be a blessing to others. Okay? It benefits everyone. Okay? And the last thing, if you're not yet convinced, <laughs> It's a very godly quality. Look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave. You got it? For God so loved the world, therefore, He gave. For God so loved the world, that's why He gave. Being a giving person, it's a very godly quality. And what did God give? He did not spare second best for us. He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. God did not spare His best for us. So why will we spare our best for Him? And His motive was pure love. Lastly, you can be excited. Okay? Continue verse 12 and 13. Because of the service by which you approve yourself, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. People will be led to praise God. Wait, be excited because you are planting seeds that you don't know when will it germinate, when it is going to grow, when it's going to bear fruit. But when you obey God in this area of giving, you're actually planting seeds that one day will grow. And who knows who will benefit there. Okay? It might even come back to you. Not only that, when you give, people see, people around you see, that your faith is real and is put into action. They will be encouraged to do the same and obey God as well, even if it takes much faith and much sacrifice. And what happens when you plant more seeds? The gospel will spread even more. And when the gospel is spread even more, and when souls open up and pray to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, and their souls become assured of going to heaven, what price is that? Okay? It says here, you bless your spiritual family, and it will attract the world as well. 
Because if we ourselves, as a spiritual family, are not being generous to one another, why will an outsider be attracted to join and want to know our God, to want to know our Jesus, if they don't see the love and the giving that's happening within ourselves? But when people outside see that we are being generous to one another, we care for one another, we supply the needs for one another, they will see people outside will see what's there, what is the common denominator that is holding them together, that makes them such a loving group of people. And their hearts will be tender and will realize one day it's because Jesus Christ is in the center of that <coughs> church. You are planting seeds, so be excited. Not only that, as I said in many other verses, you are to be rewarded anyway. You are to be rewarded anyway. Just like in most of God's commands, He blesses you back. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 says, Give! And it will give in to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you as well. Okay? This actually made into a song. Do you know that song? Yes. Okay. Do you know the actions? Yes. Maybe not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay? I'm not going to ruin it. Okay? But you are to be rewarded. And the point here is pressed down, shaken together, running over. It means you're so full. You give and it comes back to you full and even overflowing. And I read so many verses that it touched my heart. I did not know there were just so many verses that God was telling us to be generous with our lives, with our resources, and He gives it back to you anyway. And that's why I praise God when I prepare messages. God is telling me before, before everyone else, He is teaching me. I pray that we will be generous in spite of how much resources we have. Sometimes we think we have limited resources, but I believe we do have something to give and let God lead you to give. There's a viral video nowadays I've seen and it spreads the message of giving. And I hope I can show that to you right now and let the Lord speak to you about it. I'll get out here. 
You don't have to know me. You don't have to have a dollar in my head. It's your dollar. Hey, thank you so much. Give you two more. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. What's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy. Jeremy. Love it. Hey, Jimmy. Take care. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you.
God has been prodding me to give more to this community. Maybe you, God put us here. And I'm just praying for even more ideas about that. So why don't we close in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. You teach us to be faithful. Faithful in prayer. Faithful in obedience. Faithful in meditation. Faithful in fasting. Faithful in large group gatherings. Faithful in small group gatherings. Faithful in accountability. And now you teach us to be faithful in giving. And it's such an amazing thing that when we are faithful in obeying you, such as the area of giving, Lord Jesus, you give us back as well to overflow in you. So Lord, we pray that we will be faithful. You will allow us to be generous more than ever before. That we will be more intentional than ever before. That we will be very convinced more than ever before. And that we will be more excited than ever before. Lord God, you are the greatest giver. And you gave your best. You did not withhold anything from us. So Lord, we pray that we will be more giving. There's some of you here that God is giving you this gift of eternal life. This gift that God will lead your life every step of the way. But you're not sure if you fully received that yet. Then let this day be that day wherein you receive God's best, which is His Son, Jesus Christ. And you do that with a prayer, asking Jesus to come into your life and asking Jesus to lead your life. And it starts with a prayer, something like this. And if this is your day, let it be your day. Don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Do not delay. It's a prayer like this. Dear God, I thank you for giving your best. I thank you for giving something I don't deserve. Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. I admit that I have made mistakes in my life. I now believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus shed His blood to wash away my sins. I now commit my life to You, Jesus. Oh God, I ask You to come into my life, lead my life, and make me into the kind of person You want me to be. Provide me the people that will help me grow. Provide me the resources that will help me grow. Provide me the Bible verses and passages that will help me grow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And again, I pray for everyone here. Lord, I know this is a message that you want us, you wanted us to hear. And we pray, Lord, that we will be prompt about it. Because you are prompting us. To you be all the glory, Lord, right now. We just want to sing one more song to you. That nothing is impossible with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.